my town there. Partly the way it is, partly the way I imagine it. From out here, it looks comfortable, doesn't it? Prosperous, even happy. Well, for the most part, it is. Except for the poison, the rot, the horribly toxic abscess. That's Johnny Morrison. He's one of those already infected. Come on, I'll show you. Take a look at what they're reading. Go on, they won't even know you're there. That's Garion. He's the owner here. Has been for about two and a half years now. Not exactly a candidate for the Good Citizens Award. At some time or other, the whole community has asked him to take that obscene stuff off his stand. His response usually amounts to some form of dollar sign logic. It's my business. I'll sell whatever makes a profit. So instead of getting better, the obscenity gets worse and worse. If that's possible anymore. If what's possible anymore? What are you talking about? You know exactly what I'm talking about, Gary. And I'm talking about you and your sewage. All the refuse collects here like a stopped up cesspool. You put a price tag on it and you sell it without even batting an eye. Doesn't the smell ever bother you? <laughs> you don't like them? Don't buy them. There they are, the soul-searing bacterias of a new disease. Look at them. The girly in so-called nudist magazines. Magazines depicting lesbianism, homosexuality, sodomy, transvestism, sadism, bestiality, Masochism, all the abnormal perversions. And pocketbooks just as vicious. Listen to the instructions handed out by some publishers to their authors. We need tough, strong, hard-hitting, sex-action-filled books geared to the demands of today's and tomorrow's highly competitive market. We basically seek offbeat sex with emphasis on deviation. The more offbeat, the better. There is a demand for books about lesbians. Plot is secondary. What we need is detailed, vivid sex action scenes every few pages. The more the better. We don't want four letter words or too clinical a description. But within these limits, it must be as strong and offbeat as possible. End quote. And the parasite of it all, the scavenger, the great American maggot. <laughs>
Yeah, we've had complaints about Garen before. Some worse than this. Then what happens now? In all probability, nothing. Nothing? But, Lieutenant, you can see for yourself these magazines and paper are filthy and unclean and loose. Now, I agree with you. The powers that be don't agree with us. You mean you won't help us? I mean I can't. My hands are tied. Now, you can call it hopeless. I call it a stone wall. It's all the same thing. I don't understand. How can you just sit there and say, sure, the stuff is rotten, but don't throw it in my lap? That's not exactly what I was trying to say. Then what? Look, I've just so much time, and this department has just so many men. Now, you put them both together, and there's not enough time or men to do the kind of job that has to be done. But Garion is wrong in what he's doing. Now, there's got to be some way to, to make him accountable for his action. There is. You get the district attorney to prosecute. Once he does that, he can make the arrest. But I warn you, his experiences in cases like this have been pretty bitter and disappointing. Oh, come on. Don't look so worried. We haven't lost this thing yet. There's got to be a wedge, a leverage point, something the police and the district attorney won't shy away from. Sure, why not? We'll go through these books and magazines ourselves. We'll prepare a synopsis. Better yet, a chapter-by-chapter -chapter outline. We'll condense the material. Then anybody spending a few minutes reading through them will see for themselves just how rotten this stuff really is. Come on. in her cheap hotel room, dreaming of a fierce hunger for a real live man. But her boyfriend is in jail for having intercourse with her best girlfriend in a public theater. Diane attempts masturbation, but turns to an empty whiskey bottle instead. She goes downstairs where she bribes the bartender for whiskey by exposing herself to him. He masturbates. Diane further bribes him and they engage in sexual intercourse behind the bar. End first chapter. But keep in mind, there are 12 more just like this. <sighs> Lots of work, huh? Well, it does take the burden off the police department and the district attorney. Well, let's get this typed up and get it down to his office. trying to avoid my responsibilities. I am merely saying that these obscenity cases are a pain in the neck. We've tried them before. And all it ever got us was a lot of bad press coverage. But, sir, this is different. Now, when I showed that material to your assistant, Mr. Lawson, here, he said for the first time, for the first time, he really had something to work with. If Mr. Lawson knew his law more thoroughly, he would have known better than to encourage you. Now, I appreciate the work you've put into these outlines. But the fact is, this material is not prosecutable. <laughs> My office can do nothing with it. I'm not trying to be a legal smart Alex, sir, but I think you're wrong. This kind of obscenity is prosecutable. Mr. Lawson, you don't know what you're talking about. Now, if you feel some kindred sympathy with this case, go on down to Gurren's. Pull all that junk off his stand. Talk to him. I don't care. Now, wait a minute. You know the police force can't do that. It's illegal. The only way we can bring any action against people like Gurren is in the courtroom, where we can try his conduct before a jury. That's been tried before, remember? And not very successfully, I might add, a little matter of question. Or maybe you know something that nobody else knows, is that it? I know the Supreme Court of the United States makes it pretty plain what kind of cases they will uphold. Oh? And what kind of a case is that? We're talking about criminal cases, remember? Yes, I know. Then any case where the proper subject matter is presented, and where the defendant is accorded due process, and where that subject matter is passed upon by an impartial jury, if those three elements of a case are handled carefully, the Supreme Court will let the verdict of a lower court stand. That's all well and good. 
But uh, where's your authority? Here. I've been doing some research. 21 cases. Since 1957, 21 cases where convictions were obtained in the criminal courts were later denied review by the United States Supreme Court. I'm sorry, I don't follow you, Mr. Lawson. Uh, what does denied review have to do with our case? Not very much. That uh, only means that the Supreme Court doesn't have to consider any case it doesn't want to. That's a textbook rationalization, and you know it. In criminal cases like these, dealing with free speech, every court must give a constitutional judgment. So when the Supreme Court of the United States denies review, it can only mean that they can see no infringement of the defendant's rights. In other words, the Supreme Court agrees with the lower court when it stated that the material was obscene. Now that to me means something. All right, Lawson. Uh, suppose you show me some examples. You have some, don't you? Yes, sir. These are the exhibits involved in Montford versus Maryland. These girly magazines were found obscene by a trial court and by the Supreme Court of Maryland. The defendant appealed to the United States Supreme Court. 1962, the Supreme Court denied review. Here are some of the magazines from, from Garion, as bad or worse. This paperback, College for Sinners, was involved in count one of New York versus Freed. A trial in the appellate court found the book obscene. New York's highest court refused to review the conviction. 1964, the Supreme Court of the United States denied review. And this after some claim that only hardcore material could be prosecuted. Now, compare it with the books every kid can buy today at Garion's. Well, I must say that's very impressive. Your research abilities are very impressive, Mr. Lawson. Well, I'm not through as yet, sir, so you better hang on. There's more. Nude photographs. Involved in count two of the Freed case. Same results as in count one. Oh, wait a minute, hold on. While you're talking about nudes, what about nudist magazines? Seems to me like I remember getting clobbered in a nudist magazine case once. Well, meaning no disrespect, sir. You probably got clobbered on the basis of your preparation and presentation of the case. Now, I say that because the Supreme Courts of Missouri and Nebraska both upheld nudist magazines obscene. And that, to me, is significant. Look at these from Garion's. Same rotten garbage. Lawson, I don't know whether you work me because you're arrogant or because you're right. Thank you, sir. Another paperback, Fear of Incest, from a California versus Williamson. A jury convicted a liquor store owner for selling it. The appellate courts held the book obscene. The Supreme Court of California refused to review the conviction. 1964, the United States Supreme Court denied review. And just for good measure, sir, I read the book. Why, it's mild in contrast to these from Garion's. Oh, yes, and just for the record, here's what Justice Fox said about fear of incest in his opinion. Such literature, quote, serves to erode our moral standards and tends to bring about the moral decay of our people, unquote. These sadomasochistic materials are from Garion. Alberts of Roth Alberts fame was distributing material like this at the time of his arrest in 1957. The United States Supreme Court refused to reverse his conviction. All right, Lawson, all right. You may have a case, and then again, you may not. It all depends, as you've already noted, on your presentation and the way you handle the jury and the arrest. So go ahead and file on Garion. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you. Uh, oh, remember one thing. My permission doesn't carry any weight in court, so don't look for it to keep you from getting years beat off. I don't suppose I need to tell you, Lieutenant, that how you and your men handle this arrest is of extreme importance to our case. Yes, sir, I know. That's why I decided to be on this one myself. Chandler here will accompany me. We're ready to move whenever you give the signal. Well, right now, it'll do just fine. Remember, Lieutenant. Yes, we know. Don't tread, don't even tiptoe on Gary and civil rights. We're there simply to make an arrest on this complaint. No mass seizures, no padlock. Good. Make it as simple and direct as possible. You want to check us on procedure? Definitely. We want nothing left to chance. We arrive at Garion's and pretend to be ordinary customers. We know what we want, though, and we secure a copy of Sex Files. And go to Garion to pay for it.
Then we ask if he has anything a little meatier than sex bonds. If he does, we buy that book also. Right. An admission on his part that he is aware of the nature of the material he is selling would help. After we get the two books from Garion, we tell him who we are. We then explain to him that he is under arrest and is expected to appear in court on the 23rd of this month, 10 a.m. While Mr. Garion is lashing out at the injustice he is suffering, collect circumstantial evidence that he knows the obscene character of the material he is selling. Photographs evidencing this should be taken. When you finish, remind Mr. Garion of his courtroom appointment and I'll take it from there. Oh, Mr. Lawson, what happens after the arrest? I bet my two weeks vacation that Garion's lawyer moves for a dismissal of charges on a pretrial motion. I uh, kind of hope he doesn't let me down. Your Honor, I'm for dismissal of the charge on the basis that the book Sex Pots is constitutionally protected and that this charge has been improperly brought. Your Honor, we strenuously oppose the defendant's motion. There is only one question to be decided here today, and that is whether or not this is a jury question. In other words... This is a matter of free speech. We think this case should be thrown out of court. Mr. Lawson, you may continue. Thank you, Your Honor. The question to be decided here, as I almost stated earlier, is whether or not 12 people might conclude beyond a reasonable doubt that this book is obscene. That the dominant theme of the book, taken as a whole, is an appeal to prurient interests. That is all, Your Honor. Are there any further statements either side would like to make at this time? Very well. In cases like these, gentlemen, the law is that the court must decide whether there is sufficient question of obscenity for the case to go before the jury. Now, I have read this book. In my opinion, I feel that there is ample evidence that a jury could uh, find uh, this book obscene. And so trial is set for um, the 23rd. Hold it there, please, gentlemen. Oh, Mr. Lawson! Mr. Lawson! I understand an arrest has been made on the basis of a complaint against Garion for selling obscene books. Is this true? Why are you going to prosecute? Yes, gentlemen, to both your questions. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Lawson. Aren't you afraid of treading on the golden calf for free speech? No one's being denied his rights as a free citizen. All we're saying is read the book, read the outline even, and then say if the publisher, the author, the distributor, and the defendant haven't way overstepped the bounds of reason, decency, and free speech. Excuse me. Oh, uh, hold it a minute. Aren't you the two that originally filed the complaint? Yes, that's right. May I ask why? I mean, why stir up a fuss about a few dirty books? The fellow was necessary. Isn't pornographic literature a minor problem of no concern to the vast majority of us? We are not talking about a small problem on the other side of the tracks. We are talking about a multi-million dollar a year business. About smut peddlers who stain every neighborhood of every city in the country with their slime. We're talking about their victims, about young kids caught between a natural curiosity about sex and the vicious, perverted lust of pornography. We're talking about adults, too, whose immaturities have been fed by such sex fantasies. Too often have their homes and marriages dissolved into guilt and failure. But in the minds of the smut peddlers, such mutilation of heart and soul is totally justified because it shows a profit. We are talking here about such a peddler in our community. One who does not consider any other man his brother or his concern. One who would betray our community and every man, woman, and child in it for a paltry 30 pieces of silver or less. Well, that's about it for us. The judge will make his charge. The jury will bring in a verdict. All we can do now is wait and hope. Gentlemen, you ready to hear the apology of a public servant? It seems that Mr. Lawson and you two had considerable greater vision than I did. But believe me, gentlemen, from now on, I'm never going to allow legal rheumatism to set up in my office ever again. Thank you. That means a lot. Well, thank you. 
Oh, here, I thought you might be interested in this. Oh, go ahead, read it out loud. It uh, has come to the attention of this paper that there are still citizens within our community courageous enough to stand up for what they believe to be decent moral standards. Such resolute action today is often considered a joke by the rest of us. We salute these men and women for their backbone and their concern. Well, it seems like you've been winning people over left and right. For that, I thank you. Well, I guess the judge is ready to read his charge to the jury. Uh, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, the test in every case like the one before you now is the effect of the book considered as a whole, not upon any particular class, but upon all of those whom it is likely to reach. You must ask yourselves, does the book offend the common conscience of the community by present day standards? Should you find the material in this case meets the test for obscenity? Keep your fingers crossed. Have you seen this? I hope that both of you realize that none of this would have been possible if you hadn't taken that first big step. None of this. I wish more people like you weren't afraid to get involved. We truly need your help and support. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, have you reached a verdict? We have, Your Honor. And what is that verdict? We find the defendant guilty as charged. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I wish to thank each of you for your services. By your verdict, you have made a significant contribution to your community welfare. I also wish to thank the police and the prosecutor for the conscientious way in which they have carried out their duties. Better to illustrate what I mean, let me quote Mr. Earl Warren, Chief Justice of the United States Supreme Court. There has been some tendency in dealing with this area of the law for enforcement agencies to do only that which is easy to do. For instance, to seize and destroy books with only a minimum of protection. As a result, courts are often presented with procedurally bad cases and in dealing with them, appear to be acquiescing in the dissemination of obscenity. But if cases were well prepared and were conducted with the appropriate concern for constitutional safeguards, courts would not hesitate to enforce the laws against obscenity. Thus, enforcement must realize there is no royal road to enforcement. Hard and conscientious work is required. Yes, sir. That's my town there. But this time, there isn't any infection or any disease. And on behalf of my town, I want to thank you for being around to help. But there are other towns, even your own. Take a long, honest look at your town. you must realize that you're the only one who can cause or demand the arrest, prosecution, and conviction of men like Garion. Go on. You can run away from me easily, but you can never run away from your own responsibility. It's yours, now and forever. To deny it is to deny all that is precious and dear to you, all that is good in this life. But if you avoid that responsibility, then someday a generation must grow up to which perversion is commonplace. And that generation will, in its own perverse anguish, curse us all for having been so unconcerned. You must decide, my friend. You must decide very soon. <laughs>